Good afternoon from Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful and sunny Lauderdale-by-the-Sea. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful weekend after our little storms from Hurricane Asiza or Asiza, whatever it was last week. Forgotten them already. It uh, really didn't do much, so easy to forget those kind of storms. However, we are at the beginning of our storm season, so watch out, my local friends. And let's take a look at markets today. Well, what happened? What happened, you're asking yourself. And some of, Well, markets got monkey-hammered. <laughs> So in the morning, if you woke up, you were probably looking at silver and gold prices, watching them go down in New York, and uh, wondering, oh my gosh, what happened? Uh, and basically, it was a little bit of monkey hammering, and, <clears throat> and they got monkey hammered down somewhat. But you know what? That's healthy. This monkey hammering is good because this is what I've been talking about is pullbacks. Pullback, pullback, pullbacks. Now, the stock guys have been doing this for years and years and years. Well, not years, but for the decade that they were running through their bull market, they made fortunes by buying the pullbacks. Well, take example from these guys and buy the pullbacks on precious metals. So if you're watching metals today, let's take a look here. And uh, pardon me, let me go to spot prices. This is subscription service. Let's look at New York first. As I said last night, uh, usually the world markets have been leading the markets. So if the world markets are up in the evening, typically for the last two or three weeks, New York has been up in the morning, in the afternoon, and has closed higher, except for today. And if you remember, I said these little trends work till they don't. But oddly enough, Fridays are always like a witching hour. And if you're going to get monkey hammered in precious metals, let me tell you when it happens. If you're going to see gold and silver prices get monkey hammered, uh, and platinum probably as well, it's usually going to be during slow trading hours, usually before you wake up in the morning, uh, before New York opens, or uh, 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 on weekends, or during holidays where trading is very thin. That's where you see the most monkey hammering in gold. Uh, but again, this is what I call a healthy pullback. And if you watch yesterday's video, I mentioned, as I've been mentioning for months, that these pullbacks are very healthy. If you can catch it, if you can catch these pullbacks and buy on these little dips right here, this is basically what you'd be doing. You'd be averaging a little better price here. So, But the problem is with these pullbacks is timing them and finding out, you know, knowing... And again, if you watched my video last night, I, I, I said it exactly. These uh, little pullbacks can happen in the morning when you wake up. They're short-lived, maybe before New York even opens. Or it can happen through the course of a day, which kind of happened today. It kind of ran down through the afternoon. Then during later afternoon, it started to shoot back up. So let's take a look at New York. New York had a low at 2010 and a high at 2063. Now that's quite a range. That's a $50 range. However, these, remember what I've been talking about, $25 and $50 ticks. So basically what you see here is a $50 pullback or a, basically a $50 pullback. And New York closed at 210 But again, after New York closed, take a look. World spot prices, even though they didn't close at the high of this week, they still closed higher. I think this bodes good for Monday. I think Monday is probably going to open higher on New York. I think that anyone that wanted to buy this dip missed it. I don't. I think this dip is over, kind of. I don't think we're going to see it on Monday. However, if we do, buy it anyway. <clears throat> Again, buy the dips. Buy the dips. And uh, there's another way of saying buy BTFD, buy the effing dips. <laughs> so that's my recommendation. Silver, wow, talk about getting, as I said, monkey hammered. Silver did the same thing. But if you could buy on this pullback, why not save a buck an ounce? You know what I mean? Again, uh, you know, market's going on, buy these little pullbacks if you can time them and get in here properly or get in at the right time. Uh, Let's take a look here. New York, 27.47 the low, 28.81. Now, there's a hell of a spread right there. And uh, I think I actually seen a $1.70 spread between the close yesterday, I think, in New York or something. Uh, and the uh, open, or, But anyway, I've seen as high as a $1.70 difference in the, or 95 or something like that. So if you could trade on these dips. And again, remember, it was touching 29 yesterday. And it's at 27.53 in New York. But again... Uh, look, it closed up later in the afternoon. World markets did close higher, even though they didn't close as high as the uh, high this week, which was near 29. They still kind of, again, you had that monkey hammering, you had that dip, and then back up again, as you can see my cursor, and we're kind of back heading toward that 29. I think we're going to break that $30 level next week. Let's see, unless it gets monkey hammered again. And again, if it gets monkey hammered again, just buy the dips. 
Platinum, as I said, still underpriced. I still think it needs to be closer to the price of gold. So, man, I think Platinum has a lot of room to go. However, it's a metal all on its own, just as Palladium is. And I'm not even going to talk about Palladium because I don't know that market well. And hardly anybody, hardly anybody asks us for uh, Palladium. So, <clears throat> this is what we're looking at. Uh, 2035 on the close in the world markets. So this is it until Monday, until the market's open again. Uh, 2832 on silver and 957 on 70 on platinum. My guess, my guess is I think that we're going to see uh, New York open about the same as this, or or a little bit lower. But I think we're going to see New York close at least this price and silver at this price and platinum at this price, if not higher on Monday. Just my guess, but again, tough to say. And again, my opinion that could be wrong. So let's take a look at the news, Wall Street Journal. By the way, who has mentioned nothing, absolutely, I'm kind of, why? I don't understand it, but they have mentioned nothing really about this bull market in gold and silver. Silver is a double up, over a double up now since March. Why wouldn't this be in the Wall Street Journal? I mean, I'm looking at the front page. We always look at the front page. And uh, let's just take a look at the uh, 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 business uh, here, markets, markets. Where is There's the markets right there. Let's take a look at markets. Let's see if we see anything about gold and silver on here. Stocks edge up the end of the big week. Gold, not a freaking thing about silver or gold in here. And it's been like this for months and months and months. We're in a super bull market in precious metals and not a fucking word from Wall Street Journal. What the... F is up with that, and I've already unloaded the F word, so sorry about that. But what's up with that? Are they not a financial institution that reports commodities as well? Uh, so anyway, I don't know what's wrong with them. Uh, again, silver, one of the biggest uh, gains of all investments of all year, just about. Major investments, not a fucking peep. Excuse me, bleep me if you want, sir. <laughs> Anyways, let's move along here. Now, here's where you see this stuff. The supposed strange websites like Zero Heads and the other websites. I would expect to see gold and silver being reported in the uh, Wall Street Journal. Anyway, like this little article, good news is bad news. Tech bonds and bullion are all getting whacked. And I'm talking about the monkey hammering that we had this morning. They're talking about the exact same thing. There was another headline over here that Peter Schiff was talking about. Uh, gold reached a new milestone Tuesday, breaking above 2,000 for the first time. And really, uh, again, like I said, where is this noted in any of the major? They talk about it a quick blip, but really, uh, how dishonest of major corporate media not to talk about uh, a great investment that's been happening under their noses for the last really year or more, but really accelerated in the last couple months. They've not said a fucking word about it. What is up with that? Let's take a look at what Peter uh, is talking about here. And people want to sell. Here, this is interesting. Instead of wanting to buy the breakout, uh, most of Wall Street type people and people that are buying like uh, ETFs and uh, uh, contracts, they want to sell the high print. And that's exactly what they did today. Uh, once it went over 2,000, these people sold at the high, these financial people. Because I don't think they understand gold at all. At all. Most of them are college level or uh, college age. They haven't a clue about gold. They really don't. They know nothing about it. And of course, the once gold pulled back, as Peter says, the buying that drove it to 2000 in the first place was still there. The problem for the sellers or the shorts is once it got back to 2000 again, all the people who wanted to sell 2000 gold had already sold, and the smart, read this, the smart money had bought from them. So, uh, cut. <laughs> You can read that here, pause my little video, reread this one more time, but uh, I think Mr. Schiff hit it right on the head. Um, Mr. Schiff also said gold could be building support above 2000 which although it's too early to tell, I think Mr. Schiff is correct, just given his premature predictions on gold for the last decade or so. Um, he's been apprehensive to make any predictions on times, and I can't blame him because you know, again, he, he thought gold was going to go up five or six years ago, and i got to admit, so did I. However, it's taken a while for it to kind of kick back into gear. Uh, Peter said the evidence of Wall of War is that we haven't seen a big rush into gold stocks yet. I'm not a fan of gold stocks, so I'm going to skip that over. You know why I don't like gold stocks? Because it's third-party risk. It means that you have to trust somebody else, <clears throat> a company that's uh, running that gold mining company. I like the idea of having gold as a hedge against currencies and all the things. And the problem thing is, is you have it in your hand. The only third-party risk you have is that someone steals it from you. And uh, if you can't hide your stuff good enough, then uh, I guess you're not safe anywhere in the whole world. So let's take a look at what Peter said here, and I'm going to kind of move along after this. 
Peter said he was listening to CNBC and one at CNBC, by the way, man, I couldn't tell you, there's the biggest group of morons in the world. They were telling people to buy stocks full-blown right before it uh, crashed. And and they, I don't know if they're stupid or they just, uh, but anyways. Uh, Peter said he was listening to CNBC and one analyst explained why gold's move above 2000 when the big deal in predicting the yellow metal will sell off as soon as real interest rates go positive. And this is what Peter said about that. And that's what I find about most so-called gold experts in CNBC, Wall Street Journal. They're fucking idiots. I'm sorry to say that, but they really are. They have no clue what they're talking about. And I think Peter is one of the few guys that understand gold. So this is what Peter said to that guy's comment there. I'm just laughing. I mean, just as soon as real interest rates go to positive, when is that going to happen? I mean, that's not even close to happening. Positive real interest rates are even anywhere on the horizon. So if you think gold is going to keep rising until interest rates go positive, you should be buying it with both hands. I mean, obviously, there's no way the Fed is ever going to get in front of the inflation curve and have nominal interest rates higher than the CPI, let alone the actual inflation rates uh, rate of inflation, which the CPI doesn't even come close to. I know this is technical stuff, folks, but more or less what Peter says, and which is true, don't listen to these experts, uh, gold, it, these experts on anything on CNBC, Wall Street Journal, they, they have no fucking clue when it comes to gold. And again, bleep me out if you want, Marcelo. Uh, it just really ticks me off that these people make comments on CNBC and Wall Street Journal, and they have no clue. Anyways, uh, convexity, let's see. Uh, gives there's a one little thing in here that I kind of liked. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. Oh, here it is. Gold has been on a tear this year, having surged 35 percent response to 120 basis point. Now this is technical stuff. Uh, slump in real interest rates. Other catalysts include low global reads, uh, yields, erosion of confidence in global fiat currency in general, and a weaker dollar in particular. Unbridled global monetary and fiscal stimulus. Investor purchases through exchange traded funds in response to uncertainty about the evolution of panic. Boy, that's a, a lot in one breath. But however, the outlook for gold gets murky once it gets around $2,500 an ounce. Beyond that level, it would imply a massive plunge in real rates. This is interest rates we're talking about. And even a sharper rally in break-evens than what we have already seen. Correlation suggests that these factors imply a big decline in nominal 10-year yields. Interest rates is what they're talking about, which currently sit at 0.5%. Such a move would essentially mean that the markets are pricing in, now we'll read this, such a move, gold was kind of signaling this, is, it, is essentially mean that markets are pricing in a depression, folks. This is what I've been talking about. It takes no freaking genius to see what's happening uh, with what's been happening for 10 years with the Fed trying to float this economy with cheap money. Now with the uh, all the, the, the uh, 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 local and state governments closing down business, they totally screwed the pooch here. Uh, so they definitely put us in depression. So here we go. Which essentially means the markets are pricing a depression. Markets don't lie. We are pricing a depression. Why? Because we are probably headed for a depression. This is why you want to own gold and silver and platinum. Should it play out, the study indicates that gold may be propelled towards three thousand dollars. Should real yields slump to three point one for three point one five percent, negative three point one five percent. This is entirely possible, folks. Anyways, I don't want to get long-winded. This is very technical stuff, but. This is all positive for us gold and silver and platinum buyers and holders. And uh, anyways, that's about all I can say about that. Uh, we have been super... Oh, hey, listen, I really appreciate you guys watching our videos. We're kind of getting more and more viewers and stuff. I'm new at this, so forgive me for my little nuances, my little problems or little uh, mispronunciations and things. Uh, however, it's real. We do very little editing with this, except when I start cussing. Uh, Marcella likes to... Uh, edit out the uh, cussing <laughs> so anyways thanks for watching and if you don't remember I don't do anything through the mail I don't do anything on the phone so if you want to do business with us we really you have to come in and physically do it face to face with us however I don't mind if you don't live outside my area that you call me and if I'm not busy I will try to refer you to I've been in this business since I was a wee little boy I don't mind referring you to someone that I know all, you know, I know people all of the United States, someone that might be close to you that you can physically go in and get a good, safe, fair deal. I'd always prefer to deal with people face to face and keep the money local. Like if you spend money with me over here, even if I'm a nickel or something higher, I spend that money locally. My employees spend it locally. So keep the money local with your local precious metals dealers. 
And again, if you don't know who they are and you're not inside my area, call me anytime, 954-493-8811. I'm open 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. if I can spend a minute with you on the phone. But best to come in always. But even if you're not in the area, call me. If i got a moment, I'll try to refer you to someone in your area if you don't live near me. So really, this is Brian Kuzmar, Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in sunny Lauderdale by the sea. I really appreciate you watching. I appreciate the support I've had. I've had a lot of people come in the store telling me they have watched my videos. Uh, and it makes me feel better that I'm like, not talking to myself here. So thanks a lot. And again, make sure you check out our other videos. Here's our YouTube channel right here. we got a lot of cool stuff. And have yourself a wonderful weekend. It'll be exciting. If you own gold and silver, you don't, you're going to buy it. We're in exciting times, so we're going to have a lot of fun here. So keep watching. And again, thanks for watching. Have a great evening.